No more going to the OG, you guys, because I'm gonna show you how to make a traditional pasta fagiole soup. It's incredible and way easier to make than you may have thought. We're doing it in partnership with my friends over at Bob's Red Mill. Now, because dried beans taste way better than canned beans, they have texture, they have shape, they're just significantly more flavorful. We're gonna start off by soaking some beans. So I've got some Bob's Red Mill cannellini beans that are gonna be perfect in this recipe. Go ahead and add them to a container. We're next gonna fill it up with cold water, pop a lid on it. We're gonna let it sit overnight. They're gonna be nice and soaked in and easier to cook the next day. Now, if you're pressed for time, and I totally get it, a lot of you are, what you can do is add some boiling hot water to the beans, the same amount, about four inches over the beans, filled with water, let it sit for an hour, you'll be good to go. Traditionally, a pasta fagioli uses something called a brolati bean. It's really hard to find. Uh, sometimes it's called a cranberry bean, maybe you can get it. I'm gonna use a combination of both just to add more flavor to this. If not, don't worry, the cannellini bean will suffice. Your fagioli is still gonna be super, super good. And while we're talking about it, Pasta fagiole translates to literally pasta and beans. That's all it is, nothing crazier than that. So for the cranberry beans, just do the same exact thing, pour them into a container, fill it up with water. We're gonna let it sit overnight. Comies, there is a little bit of mise en place to knock out before we need to get cooking on this. So what I'm gonna do is slice, peel, and medium dice up a white onion. I'm going to medium dice some celery. Next, gonna peel and medium dice up some carrots. And then finally, I'm gonna run a few garlic cloves through my garlic press because I'm super lazy bones and I don't like mincing it anymore. Now that we've got all these ingredients, head over to the cooktop. I've got an exceptionally large pot. You know me, I'm cooking for the neighborhood. We're gonna add in a little bit of olive oil. I've got some medium to large diced pancetta bacon. This is Italian bacon, gonna add a lot of natural salt in here. What we're gonna do is just cook it until it's nice and crisp, just like you would bacon. After three or four minutes on medium heat, maybe five minutes, we're gonna take that pancetta bacon out, set it to the side on a plate. Now we've got some delicious olive oil and rendered pancetta bacon fat. Woo! It's gonna be good, you guys, super good. Add in the vegetables, the onion, celery, and carrots. We want to cook these over low to medium heat for about eight to 10 minutes. We want to make sure they're nice and tender. I'm not looking for a caramelization. If I was, we'd be a lot higher heat, but I think these lower temperatures are gonna sweat these vegetables a little bit, gonna make them super tasty. This is a great time though, because I've got some San Marzano tomatoes. They're super sweet. If you've got them from the garden, you're making this in the summertime. This is gonna be on point for you guys. So what I'm gonna do is take my hands or a hand and I like to just break up the tomatoes, sort of crush them by hand. You can probably buy these pre-crushed in a can. I just like to do it. This is the way I was taught. This is the way I'm sticking to it, my friends. Now we're gonna simply add in the finely minced garlic, give it a stir for just a minute or two. Once you smell garlic, like I always say, it's done. It's time to get going next. Go ahead and add in the crushed San Marzano tomatoes. Now we've got those drained beans, so go ahead and add in the cannellini first. Next, the borlotti beans. Now I'm gonna pour in some homemade chicken stock, and this is just gonna elevate it, my friends. Seriously, it's gonna be so good. This is what you need to do. Pour it in. And a little trick, I'm gonna add in some Parmesan rinds. You could buy these from the cheese section at your local grocery store. It's gonna add some awesome flavor to this. It's actually a great trick to add to any Italian soup. Literally just takes it over to the top. What you wanna do is cook this for about 45 minutes. We want those beans to cook down. We want them to be nice and tender. And then I'm gonna add in some of the pancetta that we cooked off. Be sure to set a little to the side. And at this point, to help thicken the soup up a little bit, and it's really traditional to do this, we're gonna add about three or four ladlefuls, maybe two to three cups total, into a blender. Once they're in the blender, we're gonna pop on the top. Be sure to remove that center piece or it's gonna explode. I like to put a little towel over there and then turning it on slowly. We're just gonna puree it until it is a bean paste or it's really thick. 
Once it's to this consistency, head back over to that pot, simply pour it in. Now it's time to hook it up with some fresh herbs. So I've got some chopped fresh rosemary and parsley. We're gonna add those right to that soup. We're gonna season it up, of course, with salt, pepper, give it a stir. We're just gonna cook it for a few more minutes or keep it warm because we've got some ditalini pasta we need to cook off. And I'm gonna stop you right here. Comey's, this one is for you. I absolutely hate, I mean, despise cooking noodles in soup. Ask yourself, you ever go to the grocery store or the hot food section, you pull out a ladle of soup and it's like gruel or oatmeal? Because the pasta is overcooked and it's turned the soup to mush. It's disgusting. So I cook pasta separate, I keep pasta separate until it's time to serve it up. That's exactly what we're gonna do here and that's what you should do whenever you make a soup that involves pasta. It's the only way to do it. So I've got a large pot of boiling water. Of course, we're gonna season it up with some sea salt and then simply add in the ditalini pasta. Be sure to move it around so that the noodles don't stick together. And after about five to six minutes, that's all it takes for these to cook. I simply cool it down under some cold water, keep it to the side in a bag, toss them in olive oil, and pull it out as you need it. So to plate this up, got a bowl full of these cooked noodles already. I'm gonna ladle on a few ladles of that pasta fagioli soup. And then I like to grate on a little bit more Parmesan cheese. I just think it adds more flavor. And then hit it with some herbs. I've got some fresh rosemary and parsley leaves. And then hopefully you reserved a little bit of that pancetta bacon like I told you to. Simply sprinkle that on the top. Boom, you've got yourself an absolutely insanely classic Italian traditional pasta fagioli soup. It's awesome during those cold and winter days. And if you love this soup, you better check out my other amazing OG version for Zuppa Toscana. And I'll see you on that video.